All right, Alex, I'll pass it to you. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Kyle. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, as the case may be. Uh, my name is Alex Shustinsky, and I'm an engineer at Superconductive working on uh, great expectations. And I am delighted to talk to you about profilers and self-initializing expectations. And while I think it's so exciting uh, that I spent part of my weekend preparing this notebook for, for you, um, I'm not sure I'll try to hold a candle to the sheer joy of uh, Don's announcement that we're going to retire Python 3.6, but I'll do my best. Uh, is uh, Kyle, is my notebook showing up? Yep, you're good. Great. So let me first talk about what the problem is that we were pursuing. And I personally encountered this in several situations when you're trying to characterize and interpret your data, but you don't quite have a feel for what the values should be. For example, um, I don't have much experience in life sciences. And one point I had to look at the health informatics data and make some assumptions about values and what they should be. In another uh, situation, I was looking at customer support data across different industries and not sure what the values of data in different columns mean, whether this is right or wrong. And so when you are uh, creating expectations and setting them on a validator, you often have to come up with expectation arguments, which means you need to know something about the boundaries and specific value ranges or other properties of your data. That is not always simple, especially for engineers. And, and so we would like to help with that by including profiling of data inside the expectations. Today, we have six of these. And so what it would look like is, for example, simple expectation, validator, expect table row count to be between. I commented out the expectation arguments which otherwise you'd have to provide. You have to know the number of rows in your data, batch after batch after batch. If you have lots of batches, it may not be so simple, especially if your data has some variability to it, um, volume changes. So here, by commenting out, it's to underscore that by setting up auto argument to true, the internal profiler will go ahead and estimate values of your data based on all the batches that are available to the validator. Um, you might also notice that there's an argument commented out called profiler config. So the expectations have an internal profiler config, but a user can uh, write their own and overwrite it or integrate it in a number of ways so that it's a combination of the two. So, Let's then go back. Uh, does anybody have questions about the, uh, the, the goals and the reasons, the motivation for this work? So now let's go back to the beginning, initial, initialize our data set. All I have here is um, three years, one month at a time worth of batches, so 36 batches of data from the New York taxi data set, and I'm just going to initialize the validator with those batches. And so um, unlike the original data set with 10,000 rows in each batch, made this a little bit more interesting, made it the uh, mean of 5,000 rows with a uh, couple of thousand uh, variants to make each table have a different number of rows. So, now we're going to run these expectations that are self rationalizing And I mentioned that these expectations, we have six of them right now, you're welcome to add more. Uh, mentioned how we can help how. Uh, they have a profiler in there. Profiler by its nature 
has three key components. First of all, the profiler focuses on the expectation that you're trying to uh, create. The next thing the profile configures is what you're doing expectation on. Is it on a table or is it on a column or is it on a column pair, multi-column? So there's that component to configure. We call it the domain component. And the third critical component is the estimator, the actual engine that's going to go and look at data in all batches and come up with an estimate for the arguments for your expectation so that the expectation configuration can go and pull them from that estimator instead of you, us engineers, having to set them. So that's how that works. And I'll show that structure a little bit later on. For now, let's just go ahead and run this self-initializing expectation. Um, in metadata, we actually return the net net profiler configuration so we could actually see what was done. And so it found minimum and maximum value of the table row count automatically based on the 36 batches of data. And obviously the expectation, the validator passes, otherwise it would not be a good estimator. So let's continue and do this on a column that fair amount and do the column between. Column between has two estimators, one for min, one for max. And you can see that they're both here. We call these estimators parameter builders. And so it found minimum and maximum values for the fair. And you can immediately see that negative fair amounts are a cause for concern, probably errors in data. Now we can also find ranges of the minimum and the maximum. And we have an estimator for that. It's a statistical estimator, looks at all batches, finds the range. Importantly, we have a categorical estimator. Uh, you can look at all batches for a given column and find out the cardinality of that column. For example, passenger count, it's an integral valued column. And that can help you bracket it with the range of passengers in the cab. So we find that it's zero through seven. So some cab rides maybe uh, in the winter, uh, no passengers. In other cases, busy work, somebody's getting a ride uh, close to Valentine's Day. Maybe it's twos and fours and some other times somebody child comes along, it's three. All told, very busy cab seven in some very busy holiday seasons. Uh, maybe a large cap. So that's what we find across all batches. It's a union of all cardinalities. Um, and quantiles is a critical expectation when we want to know how to think of our data in terms of median, 25 percentile, 75 percentile. We provide that as a default. Of course, you can put in your own quantiles and uh, override that and it will return and estimate the quantile. So in this case, we find that quantile ranges for 25%, uh, median 50% and 75% are these numbers and indeed the expectation passes. So that can give you help in estimating the boundaries of your data, characterizing your data set using the language of expectation. It's, impo expectation. it's important to stress that expectations are deterministic, but the process by which their values are discovered can be probabilistic. And there's a lot of uh, possibilities in that. Because you want deterministic understanding of the brackets characterization of your data. However, the uh, uh, approach for determining it is parameter estimation, which is inherently probabilistic. So now let's review our six expectations. There they are. Categorical quantiles. And let's save them and run the validator. Checkpoint. It will compute metrics. And here are our results. The usual data docs page displays the result and you can also look at the 
expectation suite that we just created with the help of automatic profiling. Are there any questions about this part so far? If not, I'd uh, like to discuss what one can do with it. Um, and before we run the notebook, I wanted to describe the situation. So we have our six expectations that can initialize themselves. The question is, can we come up with a profiler configuration that can be composed of these, that can characterize entire larger entities, like a whole table. So if you have, let's say, a large table, many columns, uh, heterogeneous column types, dates, identities, numbers, uh, floating points, integers, all sorts of data, can you come up with a way to characterize that entire data set, data asset with expectations? And the answer is yes, there is an approach and I'm calling this, this use case data dictionary because uh, it implies that it will look at a table as a whole and come up with a dictionary of expectations that is a suite characterizing this whole table. So let me first describe how this can be done. And there's a lot of work going on in progress. Capabilities are improving, getting chiseled to be better, more efficient. But fundamentally, the idea is that we can create a profiler configuration for, for this whole table. So this basically goes over our six self-initializing expectations and prints the profilers inside. The next thing, we actually define a profiler structure for our data set, for the data dictionary. And the profiler, as I mentioned before, consists of several key components. One is rules, the other is variables. Variables are constants that are commonly used throughout other components. They're conveniences which can be overridden. Rules themselves consist of figuring out what expectations will be on, so columns, two columns, multi-columns, table, other, then expectations themselves and estimators, which we call parameter builders. So formally, these components are called domain builder, expectation configuration builder, and parameter builder. And so we start with an empty profiler and then create object instantiation for each rule based on the meaning. So let me go over what we're going to do and then run the notebook. So first we're going to create a rule that will have expectations for columns being unique. So it could be some kind of a primary key type of a column, unique value column. Then we will create a rule for nullity. Some columns are enforced to be empty. Other rules must be non-empty. So we will have these rules for uniqueness, uh, nullity, and non-nullity. So column to be not null, in completeness and incompleteness rules. Other rules we can create would have to do with uh, categorical columns. What can be a certain categorical column? So we can define the way to find columns that are meant to be categorical, find their cardinality and create a cardinality rule. Next, we can apply semantic approach and find all columns that are either numeric or date columns and create meaningful rules that are for numeric columns, which is quantiles, value ranges, min, max estimators, and for the date rules, which could be uh, make sure that the date format is that particular format string. And also we can do the 
value range on the date columns. So these are the kind of rules that we uh, can create and each rule will have the main definition, which is, is it column, is it table, so forth. It will have obviously expectation that it will emit based on whether or not it needs to be emitted because there could be a situation where a column seems like it could be categorical, but there are too many values. So that's noise. So there is some smarts to decide whether or not to emit the expectation conditionally and estimators, parameter builders, which will compute the arguments for the expectation so that you don't have to do it yourself. So that's how it will automatically profile or characterize your data. So now let's go ahead and run this part of the notebook. Um, and for that, we're gonna back up to here and do the same thing as before, initialize it to the taxi data set. Hey, Alex, just two, two minutes. Yep. And all we're doing is just running this notebook and we will get to the point. So we're defining the profiler, all of the rules that we discussed for different reasons that we want to apply to the data. Cardinality rule, numeric rule, and finally the date string matching rule. And here comes the moment of truth. By running the profiler, the expectation suite for your entire table, all of its columns, different combinations, will be produced. What happens here is that all the estimators run, compute the metrics, store the results. Then the expectation configuration builders for each of their designated expectation pull these estimated parameters as their quarks. And now we have just created 52 expectations for your data set. Um, let's review them. That's your suite generated by profiling the data. And now we can go ahead and complete our demo by saving expectations and validating our data set with this larger suite. We get our data docs page with all the validation results presented. See the quantiles for numeric columns. See the cardinality. The cardinality tolerance can be changed. You can interact with this process. And that is the characterization of your data set of expectations. You can review the expectation suite we produced and iterate to get the introspection and analysis exploration of your data with this profiling approach. Uh, are there any questions? Well, uh, Alex, if you don't mind, just we can do it. Time. Yeah, but thank you very yeah. much for uh, your attention for this new capability. Thank you. Back to you, Kyle.